What's up guys? Welcome back to another one. Today, we are going to cape a deer, if you couldn't tell by the title, you know. But anyway, uh, this deer was brought in yesterday. He's a little bit cold. It's not gonna be a fun skin, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to save a deer for taxidermy. That way you can do it yourself if you need to. I'll show you a couple tips and tricks and what I do. Uh, I've talked to a couple different taxidermists. Every taxidermist is different. Everyone wants it done a different way. This way seems to be fairly universal for them um, as far as how they want it or generally will accept it as a decent job anyway. But check out this guy. Just got done caping this one and I was like, I need to make a video. Um, but he is huge. A big old eight point. Well, actually he's got this little thing poking out the back here, but it is just a solid deer. But the one that we're gonna be working on, look at this Kansas white tail. It is just a big, big deer. And we're gonna cape him. So uh, I'm gonna put it on my head. Hopefully the footage will be decent enough that uh, you guys will be able to see pretty easily on what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And uh, hopefully you guys will learn something. Uh, most of you probably don't have a hoist, but you want to get the deer hanging up. If you can do it warm, do it warm. It is a million times easier. When you're gutting your deer, once you hit the sternum here, the rib cage, stop. Don't cut further down. Please, 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 your taxidermist will thank you. Do not cut further down. The prep early matters a lot. Don't cut his throat open. Don't split him all the way up. Leave all this intact. Don't do it. The way I do them is I don't split down the back. If you're in a rush, you can split down the back, down to his uh, base of his head here. They can sew that back together. It's on the top of the deer. Most times, most good taxidermists will make it look like it's never been there. Someone will charge a little bit extra because they gotta sew it back together. So the less cuts you can make, the better. Few, few cuts as you can make. Don't make holes. Just give him as much hide as he can to work with. He, it's easier for him to take off some hide than to put more on because you, you can't put more of it on. Either he'll have to charge you for some extra stuff or you might have to buy another cape. Okay, I already took his front legs off. So I have another doe over here that I got skin that just came in. I'm gonna show you how to break legs real quick. Um, that way you have a basic idea how to do that because I kind of got ahead of myself before I started filming. So hold on just a second. All right, front legs. Here's what you do. Take your knife and right behind the joint, cut that, make a slice straight across, and then break it. Okay? Takes just a touch of practice, but it's really, really easy to do actually. Now, to make my cut, I start at the sternum here, and you wanna just cut, basically cut around his middle. Try and stay right underneath the skin, but I mean, it is what it is. Because if you make too deep of a cut, you'll get into your meat and that's, you know, not great, but it's workable. Like I said, they're a lot easier to do warm. This guy's cold, so bear with me. Once you get around here, typically on a warm one, you can pull quite a bit of this down by hand. I have some cuts on my fingers, so my hand's a little tender, so I can't give it quite as much of a yank as I'd like to. Now, it's easier for the taxidermist to take this little bit of meat off the skin than it is for him to sew holes shut. So if you're not real confident with it, always go on the side of caution, leave a little bit more meat on the hide, then put a hole in it. All right, pretty simple at this point. You're just breaking that tissue underneath the skin and just starting to peel the hide down. There's meat up on the brisket side, up here on his chest, a little bit thicker than the stuff in the back. So you'll get a little bit more meat there. We are in the middle of a rut here in Kansas. These bucks have run off all their fat. They are skinny, tired deer. Just use the tip of your knife, make small cuts. Big cuts you're probably gonna cut a hole somewhere, especially on a cold one. I'm trying to do this fast. Normally I'll leave this meat on the deer, but 
for the sake of not making this a half hour video, we're just going to go quickly. Okay, just keep going all the way down. If you can't just pull the hide down, what I like to do is I like to grab it and then it gives you a chance to get a little bit bigger strokes in. It is a little bit tougher on the bottom side of them here. So be careful when you get up around these places, especially where his body has a curve, like right here. There's lots of little, little nooks and crannies that the skin goes to, so just be very careful. Don't try and go too fast. So I've gotten to the back of his leg here. I'm just trying to work the skin down and around. And when they're cold like this, they are way harder to do, especially when their legs are locked out like this. So I gotta try and bend them down some because the, what you're trying to do here is pull the whole thing off like a sock. You got your, you know, just one big hole up here, the rest of it completely intact. That is the main goal. Um, well, except for these holes, but you know. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. It gets a little bit thin up here, so be extra careful. I'm just using my normal butcher knife. I've got them linked down below um, in my equipment. A lot of the taxidermists that I've seen cape, they like to use the replaceable surgical blade knives. Um, those look really, really good, but they're really sharp. Be careful, it's really easy to nick the hide. So here on the arm, what you want to do is try and get all the way around so you can get your hands around his leg. So I'm really close, so I'm just going to see if I can get my finger through. There we go. That way. I know, I, that way I know where I'm at there. If it starts getting really tight up here, you probably need to work it down a little bit more on the back of his neck. Now I can pull this just cut around. There we go. His neck up here is getting tight, keeping me from pulling the way I want. Okay, glad that's done. See, now they're just complete socked out. And that way he doesn't have to sew any holes, any holes that he does sew, because he made them. Okay, now this part is pretty much just the same as it was up here. You're just trying to slowly peel it off. On warm deer, that normally comes off pretty easy. On these cold ones, you have to fight for every single <laughs> quarter inch or so. so. It's going to take me a little bit to get him peeled out. But just be careful. These holes up here matter a whole lot more than the ones up here. So. This is horrible. Normally it's clean. Of course, when I'm making a video, I leave a bunch of meat on it. What I'm doing is I'm reaching up into the hide, I'm grabbing it and pulling it to give myself a little bit better view, and that way I can kind of help pull the hide away from the meat. This is like pulling teeth right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get it down, 
it'd be the same thing. I'm just gonna keep working all the way down until I get to the base of the head. When I get closer to the base of the head, then I'm gonna pick you guys back up and show you what to do there. Okay, so I've got it <laughs> worked all the way down to the base of his head. It's kind of difficult because he's got such a wide rack, the hide doesn't wanna come down real far. But what you wanna do is once you get down to the base of his head, you wanna cut just around. I know we like to come in through the back here. We always call it the globe joint. There's a big joint in there that's pretty easy to get through. So if you cut right at the base of his head, there's just a little bit, come up about a half inch, make a cut across, and then you can get into this joint. It's, I'll show you when I get it apart, give you a better idea how it looks, but uh, it's pretty easy to get apart once you find it. It also helps if you take taken off about several thousand heads this way. So you see this joint? The one coming right at the base of the head just slips right in there. So it's just kind of a, an inset. And it's just really, really handy for popping stuff off. So what you'll do typically, pretend this is still connected here. You wanna make a cut across and you have to kind of go up and around. Just kind of, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you have to kind of wiggle through the joint. And then once you do, his head just kind of falls the rest of the way off. When you're finishing these cuts here, make sure you don't slash your hide. I've done it once, don't do it. It's not good. And make sure you don't drop it. There you go. There is a finished bottom of the head cape. Let your taxidermist do the rest because like here, his eye ducts and stuff like that, all that has to stay intact if you wanna do it the rest of the way. Well, that's it. Uh, we, got, we got a cape done. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you so much for, for all the support. If you guys did like the video though, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'm trying to do a lot more of these how-to and butchering type videos. I upload right now. I'm uploading about two times a week. I'm hoping to get you know through my busy season here at the shop where I can start uploading every three days again. Maybe more if I'm lucky. But uh, I'm trying to put out as much content as I can. Um, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. This is way easier.